Hello and welcome to a special on the rise of Anshu Jain, a new mascot of Indian prowess across the world in general and certainly in Europe. In what has been a much-awaited appointment, Anshu Jain is now the co-CEO of Deutsche Bank, leaving behind two years of controversy and speculation on whether or not his nationality could come in the way of merit. Anshu Jain is on top. Deutsche Bank has finally ended speculation about its future leadership, making Anshu Jain a co-CEO along with Jürgen Fitchen, a German responsible for business in his home country for Deutsche Bank. Anshu Jain's appointment ends the mistrust many in Germany feel about international investment bankers and the speculation that his inability to speak German was coming in the way of merit. They've had a track record, really, frankly, since 1995 when Edson Mitchell took a big team over from Merrill Lynch and established Deutsche Bank as one of the leading investment banks. And really, they haven't surrendered that position in the course of the last 16 years. So I think we should see this as a very, very positive appointment. Anshu Jain is considered the sharpest banker on this side of the Atlantic. With the new position, he has also become the most powerful. India born Jain is credited with turning around fortunes at Deutsche and riding a market wave with investment banking growth. Until the recent recession, this business was bringing 85% of the bank's profits. All this success also made Anshu Jain the top earner at the bank. At 12 million euros, he was the top earner at Deutsche Bank last year, earning even more than the CEO, Joseph Ackerman. Anshu's success is another feather in the global Indian success story. After Vikram Pandit and Ajay Banga, Anshu Jain's appointment proves that Indian-born acumen is truly going global and delivering results. Anshu is dynamic, energetic and a befitting choice for the role. I've been hearing about Anshu's excellent performance as the head of corporate and investment banking. He will have to play a much larger leadership role than he is, he's done in the past. Praise for Anshu goes beyond Indian borders. He is known to be a people's person and connects with his seniors and juniors alike. For contemporaries, he's more than just a seasoned deal maker who's kept his poise and confidence making any opposition weak with knowledge, clarity in numbers and quick decision making. It is widely believed that Anshu will lead the operational side of the bank, Jürgen will manage the public and political relationships in Germany, Anshu will be the CEO for five years. The new CEOs will have to meet the challenge of dealing with upcoming weakness in its core investment banking division. The lender warned it may miss its goal of generating over 6 billion euros of pre-tax profit due to the European debt crisis. For someone who counts Mukesh Ambani, Nanda Nilekini and Sunil Mittal as good friends, Anshu has built a network of seriously high net worth deals for Deutsche Bank and his Indian roots have sure come to use as the axis of market power shifted from developed to the emerging world. An avid cricket fan, Jain has a loyal following among his staff internally known as Anshu's army. The father of two keeps a low profile, strolling into conferences alone with his backpack and an iPad busy making notes and listening intently. Jain is now expected to move to his residence in Frankfurt, where last but not the least, Anshu is likely to brush up his German. Okay, let's bring in two global Indians and a banker out of India to discuss the rise of Anshu Dan and what really it means or signals about Indian prowess. We've got Windy Banga, Rana Talwar and Chanda Kocha are all joining us. Windy Banga, to come to you first, quite a big achievement for an Indian take charge uh, as one of Europe's most powerful banks uh, and certainly a big global move from an Indian standpoint. Well, when I think of Anshu, I think of a person who's extremely focused uh, and on focused on results uh, and this is what he has shown all through his career professionally uh, but you can also see it in in the passion with which he uh, plays his sport whether it be cricket or golf he's right. as focused on the cricket field or the golf course 
Okay, we'll talk about his golf and cricket in just a bit, Windy Vanga. Let's just bring Rana Talwar in. Now, one of the reasons why he's on the show is because clearly he has a history of being India's first banker at the top. He was heading Standard Chartered and that was quite setting the tone for how Indian talent was going to see itself on a global stage. What is your view, Rana, as this appointment finally comes through after much speculation? Well, I think it's a great achievement, not just for an Indian, but for a relatively young top professional to uh, reach this uh, position in Deutsche Bank. Uh, uh, mine was almost exactly uh, 15 or 16 years ago when I got appointed to Standard Chartered. And I think, yes, I think both in the US and in Europe, uh, the world has changed, has become a lot more open and uh, boardrooms are much more diverse. Okay, Ryan Talwar says that, well, everyone's become a lot more open lately. Chanda Kocher, an Indian-born banker taking the lead, uh, taking the helm at what would be the thick of the storm right now. Deutsche, because of the European crisis, India's global connect seems to be coming around pretty well, doesn't it? Well, I'm absolutely delighted to hear about the appointment of Anshu. Uh, I think this is uh, really one more uh, reiteration of the recognition of uh, Indian talent in the global context. You know, he really uh, joins that group of professionals of uh, Indian origin who are being entrusted the responsibility of running large global corporations. So I think this is just uh, a further recognition of uh, the Indian talent in the global context. Indeed, so and India has certainly become a, a big piece of the global story. Even Dibanga, you've known Anshu for a while uh, as you were talking about his golf short while back. Now, what characteristics do you think really got him to the top? Because he doesn't seem to open up with most people. However, uh, nonetheless, he's looked at as a people's man. Well, I think um, uh, Anshu has historically led the international side of the bank and for several years, and he's actually demonstrated an extraordinary run of performance. Uh, that also plays, by the way, uh, to the situation of the world. The world is becoming much more multipolar, and there are opportunities emerging all over the world. So I think in one sense, uh, I have little doubt that the bank uh, and Anshu probably will continue to drive um, uh, more and more international expansion. Rana Talwar, uh, you were sort of hosting an evening with him just about uh, seven days ago. Uh, was it Anshu's killer instinct on deals? Because he certainly makes a large number of people weak when it comes to numbers and knowledge. Uh, do you think that's something that has kept its weight, the merit story? Well, firstly, uh, Anshu is a very, very smart guy. I don't know what his IQ is, but uh, I'll bet it's in the top quartile, uh, top 10% in the world. Um, I think he's got a very loyal following in the group that he leads. Uh, so he's demonstrated leadership, smarts, and importantly, an ability to consistently uh, achieve profits and uh, superior returns for his bank. Okay, let's get Chanda's perspective on this. Chanda Kocher, now of course, while we do know of qualities of leaders, uh, after a point they sort of become on a sort of equal platform. Do you think the fact that Anshu has risen through the ranks internally, that's been actually a big plus uh, in making this appointment work in the future? Well, you're talking specifically of people who've been, uh, who've spent a lot of years within the organization and grown through the organization. I think uh, the big positive that they bring is their ability to understand the organization uh, through the various economic cycles. Uh, through the challenging times and through uh, you know the best times and also their ability to understand uh, the organization across various businesses various functions and so on uh, talking specifically about Anshu Jain I think uh, you know he really brings a deep understanding of the markets uh, and of course uh, his uh, financial acumen his business acumen and over and above that uh, a, a big understanding of uh, the organization itself Rana Talwar, at various times in the banking sector, people just talk about what are big egos. Now, while it may not be true of any of the two people at Deutsche who've been announced co-CEOs, you think it's been a smart move to have a, a more German banker take care of the headquarter politics, leave Anshu to do what he does best, which is make money? Well, uh, Shaili, uh, I think it's a fact that two in a box, meaning two people sharing 
chief executive or other responsibilities always makes for greater co complexity. I think there's no getting away from that. Uh, on the other hand, in this particular case, given the different skill sets and given the different franchises, you know, the global banking, investment banking with Anshu and the German franchise, retail, corporate, commercial, uh, with a German who has a presence and contacts both with the government and corporate Germany. Uh, I think actually uh, there's very little overlap, so I think it should work. Uh, plus Anshu is, uh, I think, 10 or 14 years uh, younger than Fission, so he's got, a, he's got time to work his way into uh, broader responsibilities. Well, which is why probably people are reading into the five-year term that has been assigned to uh, Anshu Jain. Ranthala, though, when you look at Anshu Jain's current skill set, you expect that to evolve a little more from the current uh, piece because the bank is looking at a future that could have more crisis, a little more balancing to do investment banking versus retail. Any shifts you expect in terms of leadership role qualities? I'd be amazed if there was any seismic switch uh, for the reason that a they have had a well articulated and well uh, executed strategy uh, there is continuity Anshu has been there he's been the architect of the investment banking um, wholesale banking strategy very successfully uh, the German franchise is in Germany is like State Bank of India uh, it has a presence is a local bank uh, and a local corporation so I'd be amazed if there'd be any uh, big shift in strategy, particularly given that Joseph Ackerman is staying on as chairman of the supervisory board. Right, so in that backdrop, of course, Winnie Banga is a global Indian, you yourself have been exposed to what might be global challenges and of course watching out for emerging markets that look as exciting as uh, the way India has in the past. How do you think, uh, you know, Anshu will have to look at his, uh, the nationalistic part of his uh, uh, responsibility here on and what shifts would you anticipate? Well, uh, as I said, I think he's extraordinarily performance oriented and I think therefore one would expect uh, that to be reflected in, in whatever he does or whatever he touches. And the second thing is, as I said, is that he has a very broad perspective and therefore I would expect to see the bank get a much more international image uh, than it might have today. Uh, performance oriented and that's really what even Chanda Kochar has been referring to. Uh, Chanda, strategic considerations have been key in this case. Uh, do you have a view on the dual CEO model as a banker yourself? Uh, how relevant do you think uh, this entire exercise might have been for the German entity? To be fair, I would say that you know every large corporation decides on its management structure based on the prevailing macroeconomic environment, based on its own strategic considerations. So uh, we have to remember that uh, Deutsche Bank is a big bank for Germany. I think it, is, it, has, an import, it, has, a, it has a big impact on the German economy itself. Uh, in, uh, uh, and over and above that, of course, the global economy. So I'm sure all these things have been kept in mind and the structure has been uh, decided. So I'm sure everything has been thought through. They, are, they really are the people, the board of that bank is really, uh, you know, uh, the set of people who would have thought through this and put the structure in place, what they thought was right, given their strategic considerations. Okay, so, you know, you're already seeing a sort of list of reasons why Indians may land up top jobs. But Rana Telwar, is this move, which is quite a significant one in terms of sending a signal within Europe, do you think European banks are out there taking a cue from it? Well, I hope it sends a signal not just to other banks, but uh, to corporations in Europe. Uh, I think they'll only benefit from diversity. I think we are seeing quite a lot of that at the board level, the non-executive uh, director level. And I think to see this happening at the executive management level, there have been a few examples uh, here in Britain, um, fewer in uh, continental Europe, and definitely in America, where a few of us have uh, reached these positions. And I think you're going to see more of it. You're going to see more of it. With that optimism, Mindy Banga, do you agree there's been a loosening up uh, somewhat that's happening compared with America about how Indians can rise to the top and steer the ship brilliantly? I mean, USA has had many such success stories with Indians uh, rising to the top and quickly at young ages. Well, as I said earlier, I think European companies tend to be more conservative 
uh, than, uh, let's say, American companies uh, in terms of thinking through issues of uh, merit versus origin and so on. And I think this is, this is probably a very good development. Okay, so you clearly do admit while European banks are sort of more conservative, this is certainly one that's sending out a more positive signal. Chanda Kochan, my final question to you. Since you yourself started your career at the bank, uh, what do you think uh, happens when you rise through internal growth as a story within the organization? Is the approach toward, uh, towards, let's say, leadership evolving with the bank's philosophy, ethics? Does that sort of change the approach when you take charge on top? Do you think something that will uh, drive Anshu as well, knowing the philosophy that the bank has actually brought on the table all these years? Instead of really getting into uh, very specific of what Anshu Jain needs to do, uh, because I'm sure he'd do a great job, I would just say that for anyone who moves from just being a division head to a CEO, uh, I guess in a way it's a change of, uh, you know, the level from which you start looking at the organization. And uh, what you then look at is really not how your division or how your business should move forward, but how the organization should move forward. So I think at the CEO level, then you set the next three years, the next five years vision for the organization and really then uh, put in pieces to say within that how each businesses will contribute to take the company or the organization to that level in the next three years or five years. So you really have to create the vision for the organization and then put all the pieces together and then really work with the team who actually executes it. Indeed so. And, and given the state of Europe, I suppose the, the challenges of crisis are always around to well, bring pulls and pressures. But that's uh, the Anshu Jain story discussed with Rana Talwar, Vindi Banga and Chanda Kocher. Thank you all for joining us with a perspective on the Indian on top in the global banking scenario. Of course, we did speak to several corporation heads as well. We're leaving you with those quotes.